I'm Gina Loves Christmas. Welcome back to the channel for Christmasing. Today we're gonna make that garland that's fresh from the Christmas tree lot, that nobody's allergic to, that never sheds in your house, that looks beautiful the entire season. That's the one we're going to make. It consists of my base garland. I'm using a 20 inch garland today. And it consists of picks, a whole lot of Sullivan's picks. With this placement, I'm going to have my garland kiss the ground. I love a moment where the garland just kisses the ground. So that's what's gonna happen here. And to get that to happen, I'm just gonna place it where I want it. Again, using the garland and the wire to my advantage. If you change your mind, just, that's okay. So with a garland like this, the base garland, since my swooping pieces are going to come down here, the garland itself doesn't necessarily have to, unless I wanted it to do like and then yes, you need your garland on the ground. But if you just wanted to like kiss the ground, then you don't have to do that. I'm gonna fluff a bit as I go. And for this garland, I'm going to go, okay, this one's different, are you ready for it? I'm going to go under the bolster. It's gonna take me a minute. I'm gonna get all, gonna get those muscles on. And just hoist it on over. This is so dramatic and dumb. <laughs> Kyle's watching me and it's like, I'm mad at him because he's not helping me. <sighs> ah. Counting on my way up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I wanna leave enough of a swoop and I wanna feel like it's even. So when I lift, I'm gonna get one, Two nice swoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can count a couple times, I, I suggest it. I'm zip tying this to the baluster. I'm gonna do as tightly as I can. Again, if you like somebody to help you and hold the weight of the garland up, that would be ideal. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I got this. Make it very tight so it won't go anywhere. Don't use the dollar store zip ties. You need to use good ones. Did you get that? Good. We always cut our zips. We're just not the kind of people who don't. And if you have ponytails and you do like a cute pony, you know how you always take hair and cover up the top of the ponytail holder, the elastic or whatever you're using? We do that with the garland. We don't want to see the zip ties. Mm -mm. <laughs> Number one goal with zip ties. We never want to see them. I am going to take my garland until it gets heavy and I'm gonna tuck it down on the baluster, just like this. One on each one. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna release the weight. It's gonna be heavy, trust me. The base garland is on, and the base garland is exactly what it is. It is the base. This is a 20 inch wide garland, but I'm gonna cover it with, I have a whole lot of picks. I'll tell you at the end how many. We're gonna count as we go. It really is all about that base. I have six mixed pines from Sullivan's and I have some cedar and I'm gonna place them coming down the stairs. So when I go to put them in and I get to the bottom, I don't run out. You must control your recipe. If you don't have enough quantity to finish the giant task you are taking on that is your staircase, then you're gonna get to like this part and then, then you're gonna have the little cocktails and Christmasing on your hands. Whew. And that really does the job. <laughs> this is a Sullivan's Douglas fir. I have 18 of those. I'm gonna drop them down into my recipe. It's a pick drop. Cypress, I have 24. Picks are not like your children. You're allowed to have a favorite, and this is mine. This is a pine eucalyptus. I tried to get Sullivan's to change the name of it on their website, and they didn't, but if you message them, they might. We need this Christmasers. This is the Gina Loves Christmas favorite pick in the whole world, whole wide world. I have 48. How many, how many calories have we burned already? Thank you, Elf Kyle, for coming in and moving all my picks for me. We placed all the picks to the back. I mean, I could have done that, but I just wasn't thinking about it at the time. My base garland comes in four widths, a 12 inch. That's gonna be the super skinny. Maybe you just need it because you're gonna cover it with a lot of deco mesh. Did I just say that out loud? I did. But if you're gonna do that with it, then it's great. Or maybe you just have a really small area where you need to tuck something. The 12 inch is great. There is a 14 inch. It's just a little bit bigger than the 12. There is a 16 inch, which would be my base garland, like standard, go to 16's great. 20, I mean, why would you do 16 if you could have 20? But I'm just saying, the different price points, get the best you can afford. And it's like, this is gonna be with you for your whole life. Using the wire in my base garland, I'm going to go in and I'm going to release my pick. Oh, well that felt so good. I know. 
You're welcome. And then I'm going to start building. I'm going in with the longest one first, longest pick first. And when you tuck into the heart of the garland, you can then take the branches and just twist. And that's gonna stay there. You don't really need to put a lot of thought into this one. There's really no right or wrong. Nothing you're gonna do is grandly, grandly going to affect the design. Unless you don't pop the pick. You have to pop your pick. You must release it. You have to send it off into its glorious ways of just looking real. Otherwise, it just looks like it's pretend. And then you just defeated the whole point of your like straight out of the Christmas tree farm garland. The pick is also made out of wire. So if you need to move a stem or do something with just do that. When you do it, engage your core though. We need one more and we need it right there. This is why you start with the bottom. It's the first thing people are going to see. And as you go up, you can cheat it with other things, but right here, you can't recreate this moment later. No, you cannot. Next, I'm going in with my fullest pick, which is the mixed. And this one, my garland's 20 inches wide. I've got, got some heft there. So this one, I'm going in this direction and I'm actually teetering it off the staircase. And I'm gonna give it some shape. <laughs> so good. Douglas fur is next. This is a very hefty pick, and the, this really does look, I mean, they all look real, but this one just brings in some extra. And if it's not extra, I'm not interested. Cypress is next. The cypress has a really beautiful, much like the cedar, a really beautiful, like, do you feel it? The it's like, that's its audio. I just made it up. Now it's all I hear when I put it in there now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love it. I don't suggest pre-cutting your picks. If you have to cut them, I, I prefer to bend them because I, maybe I wanna use this somewhere else next year and I need the pick long. But if, you, uh, so don't pre-cut them. I utilize the pick that makes a shoosh sound. I utilized it to create a shoosh effect on the ground. To frost it off, my favorite pick. The reason I'm doing my favorite pick last is because, that's the last thing I wanna to touch, honestly. <laughs> But also, the texture burst that comes off this pick is different because it has so many different textures in it. It's like when you apply your hair products and you always do you know, your gloss, it's gonna make it a little shiny, and then you hit it last with your like fine finish spray. And the reason you do that is because the fine finish spray gives the best texture blast. I feel like I can turn anything into a hair analogy. Test me, ask me anything. As I work my way up, I'm going to make sure that my picks are all popping just in case there's a spot where it doesn't feel as great. This is the only spot I'm really seeing. I'm gonna pop this out. I'm gonna be mindful of my tails of the picks and just make sure it looks beautiful. From ever, oh my gosh, that side's so pretty. Remember, I'm sure nobody has forgotten when I pulled the entire garland through this one particular baluster, I'm going to make sure <laughs> she also has beautiful pics on her. You have to cover everything visible. Going in first with my cedar, I'm gonna work my way up. Making sure that I'm getting all the good drip where I need it. Drip, droop. My Douglas, making sure to tuck under. I like to do this here because the upside down, this direction, rather than front facing the way I decorated uh, our other garland video, if you didn't see it, you should watch it. It was so pretty. It's very, very different from this one. But I like to work this direction, but I don't like to do this if I'm ribboning because this is really hard on the back. But if you're doing it this way and it's something relatively quick, this is the way to do it. That's a random pro tip. What am I serving if I'm not serving up random pro tips? If you are working on the ceiling or up high and you are hyper extending your back, or if you are arching forward, you should be engaging your glutes, like as tight as you can. It's not cute from behind. I was very self-conscious about this in my younger years, like somebody's gonna be watching me decorate and it's gonna be like, what is she doing over there? And then I realized when I did it, my back didn't hurt the next day. This is a pro tip worth embracing. Engage your glutes and while you're at it, just go ahead and engage your core. What if you don't get any other fitness? You're like covering all the bases the most important part of your body, right here. Engaging my glutes, I'm going to continue on. I always wonder what will I teach you next that you don't already know. 
Any yoga instructor is going to be like, I knew that. It's very important you saturate the bottom of your garland because guests, when they're walking up and down, this is the part they're going to look at the most. Whoever's in the balcony is going to see this the most. Using whatever I had left up there, you, as you can see, I threw a one down, two down, <laughs> three, it's fine. But using what I have left, filling in holes or whatever, just wherever I want to see this kind of texture. If I had put lights in this before I started, you wouldn't have seen a single one, I guarantee it. So now I'm going to zip through, add my lights right where I want them to peek out of the greenery without ever seeing the hoard. She'll be coming around the staircase when she comes. Remember that your picks are in there. So when you're manipulating the lights to get them into the heart but still peeking out, you can move your picks around. They're very, very compliant picks. We like them. They just do what they just do exactly what they need to do every single time. My cord is up there. It's where it's plugged in. But if you were working on a staircase that didn't have power access, you need battery operated lights. We don't do exposed cords Christmasers, ever. There is no excuse for it. If you have to have an exposed cord, you need a battery operated light. My favorites are gonna be found right here. We went to the tree lot together, we came straight out of the forest, and now we have this beautiful garland that nobody is going to be allergic to, it's not going to die, it's not flammable. This is it. Picks. <laughs> That's why I love them so much. <laughs> Subscribe, we're gonna drop a lot more of this, bringing you the best in Christmas. If you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram. I'll meet you there in the DMs, and you can hang out with me and the Christmasers there every single day. In the stories, that's where you're gonna find me all day long. Thank you for Christmasing with me today.